Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Today's video, I'm going to be extending the bed of a truck. This is a stake bed truck. The bed is eight feet wide and 12 feet long. Belongs to a drywall contractor, and he's having problems getting a 12 foot sheets of drywall in. It's just about an inch or so uh, too short with the stakes in the back of the truck. So the plan is to extend the back of the truck, probably three or four inches, and put those stakes back in uh, so it can accommodate the 12 foot length of drywall. So let's get started on today's project. All right, so you know you can do this in all kinds of different ways and uh, everyone's gonna have their own idea. This is something that was uh, spur of the moment. I had to make a decision and do what I thought uh, would work. So I grabbed a piece of uh, six inch angle iron. This is five sixteenths thick. This is the thinnest that I could get. I was trying to get something around a quarter. They didn't really have it at my metal supply store. Stuck it in my saw and it's just a little bit short. And uh, I had to finish it off with uh, a cut off wheel right here. All right, so I'm gonna close off the ends and I've got some quarter inch plate right here and uh, I'm just kind of lining that things up and be sure it's gonna fit in there. And I gotta do some trimming and uh, this is a good opportunity for me uh, to work with the HTP Microcut 875. This is my plasma cutter. I don't get a chance to use it too often, but in a situation like this, I couldn't think of a, uh, an easier way to do the cutting. I just put a straight edge on there and uh, and just run that thing right through there and it did a great job cutting cutting through this quarter inch plate. You know, it's nice to be able to uh, have the proper tools in the shop to do the job you need to and uh, you know, it sure makes uh, makes for a lot uh, a lot easier and a lot of better a lot better and a lot much more efficient uh, much more efficient job here. All right, with those two plates cut out, I just take the angle grinder right here, and, and um, this is a uh, zirconian uh, 36 grit flap wheel right here, and uh, it, uh, did the job cleaning everything up real nice. And you can see that that plate fits on there pretty good. Just lining everything up, be sure everything is nice and square. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple tacks on the back side. Uh, maybe gonna run them about an inch long or so on the back, just kind of hold everything in place. And then on the front side, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and go all the way through top and bottom. And not really caring about how this is just looking. Cause I'm just gonna get an angle grinder and grind it all flat. The idea you here is to uh, make it look like it's uh, nice and clean and one solid piece right there. And just like that, I did that on both sides. And then the, I'm marking out for the stake uh, uh, panels right here and I'm trying to get the holes just right. I also have to notch for this little framework for the hitch here on the back of the truck. Uh, I'm laying out right here I'm using a silver pencil and just trying to get my marks nice and accurate. Hoping that uh, when I cut this, that uh, the gates will fit in there. <laughs> I don't want to. It's going to be hard, and when I cut this, I have to do some trimming, so I'm taking my time to be sure everything is just right. All right, so this is big, just a big straight edge. Um, I'm just going to clamp it into place right here, and I'm just going to start cutting here. Now, I've never done anything like this. Now, this is some quarter-inch thick plate, and I'm starting right here kind of in the middle, so I know I've got to kind of tip it a little sideways and, and get a hole started before I get going. Had a little bit of difficulty here at first, uh, trying to figure out how this is going to work. The problem that I had is when I was cutting the hole in, um, it was uh, having some blowback and that slag or dross was sticking to the uh, uh, to my straight edge. I had to take a chisel and clean that off. I'll show you a little bit here. I've moved it back, and I'll kind of now that I've got it figured out, I'll show you how this is going to happen. But basically I just tip it, uh, blow the hole, and I just took a little chisel and chiseled off that uh, uh, dross and then it was a clean cut from that point forward. Did the same thing on all of them. It worked out pretty good. Sometimes it just takes a little time to figure out how, how it's all gonna work. Now I couldn't imagine doing this any other way. Um, 
I, I, I don't know, maybe drilling it out and then uh, with a saw, some sort of a uh, you know, jigsaw or something to clean up the edges. I, I don't really know, but this, this was fast and efficient to me. Um, it didn't take very long to do this. And once I got the, the long part uh, nice and cut out, then I just got a shorter straight edge right here and just cut through it. You can see the cuts are pretty clean. Uh, it, it's working out pretty good so far. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm just freehanding everything. It seemed to seemed to stay in a pretty good place right there. That's a pretty good look at the cut. You know, not too bad, I gotta say. You know, for cutting right in the middle of a plate. All right, everything is nice and uh, in a row there, and looking pretty good. And I just got to get those little uh, notches in the back of the uh, frame of the, of, the, of the truck bed there for the hitch. I'm going to get those out of the way. And just hit it with an angle grinder, clean up any of the rough edges, and be sure everything is uh, smoothed off. After I moved everything away, it was just a mess on my welding table right here. Uh, but it's really no problem, you know. I just uh, scraped off all the debris and... Uh, I've been using this stuff right here called Gibbs. It's a it's a like a lubricant. Uh, one of my listeners had uh, mentioned to me about uh, that that's a good product. They use it all the time, so I ordered it up and I've been using it for the last six months or so. It works great. I love it. Got it on Amazon. All right, so these are the uh, the little pockets for the the stake the stake panels. Um, I've got them pre bent uh, on on Amazon. I bought four of them. They're designed for this. Um, I had to do a little bit of modifications to them. I had to add this angle iron right here to, in order to, I don't know if you can, you know, the angle iron is 5 16 thick. So I had to bump it out a little bit. So I used this angle iron right here to kind of move things out. And, uh, you know, you gotta always do some modifications uh, to things that nothing seems to ever work the way you hope it, the way you hope it does. And you just gotta, you know, make these adjustments. That little piece of flat bar stock is on the bottom right there. That is just to stop the uh, gates from going down and also to allow, um, uh, you know, water or debris or anything to get by there. Now these are gonna be on the inside, so you're not gonna really see them. Yeah, it didn't take too long to put these things together. You know, this whole project uh, probably took me about, uh, I'm gonna say three hours or so from start to finish. It's really not too bad when you think about it. All right, and there's all four pockets right there. All right, for the installation, you can see I've got them pre-marked on the inside, about a half inch down from the top. I already did my pre-calculations and measuring, so this is uh, right where they need to be. And uh, see that I've got them bumped out with the angle iron right there, and it's gonna allow those uh, stakes to go right down inside the pockets. All right, and I'm just gonna use about, uh, about an inch or so bead top and bottom on both sides. That's all you really need. And there they all are. That's uh, that's the underneath side. You're really not going to see that. You know, so far so good. That turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased the way things are working out right now. You, you know, you just never know when you start a project like this how things are going to go. It seems to be going pretty good. Of course, I hope it all fits. All right. So when I went to measure to be sure everything was going to fit. This is a six by six piece angle iron. The bed frame is five and a half inches and uh, I was gonna leave it and then I decided I just couldn't do it. It's just something that I just said, I can't, I can't have this thing sticking down uh, a half inch lower in the frame. I, I just don't think it's right. So um, I went ahead and cut that extra half inch off and it didn't take too long at all. Kind of blew through that quarter inch plate and this is eight feet long. And I, you know, I know this is all sped up, but realistically, it probably was less than five minutes. I couldn't imagine doing this any other way. 
All right, so I got the clamps off right here and just a couple of taps here with the hammer uh, to break it loose. And I'll just get an angle grinder in here or with a flap disc and just uh, smooth everything out. And just like that, um, down to five and a half inches. Got a little taper on the end right there, uh, you know, to make up the six on the side. Actually, it didn't look too bad at all. That wasn't... Uh, that looked pretty good. All right, so getting ready to do the install here. So uh, I'm just taking off the paint uh, in the weld areas on the frame of the truck right here, just getting everything down to bare metal, clean metal. Knew this thing was heavy. I just didn't know how heavy it was. And, uh, you know, I was thinking it was around 150 pounds. Uh, so just out of curiosity, I wanted to get it on the scale and just see how heavy it was, let you guys uh, see that. This is my old cheesy shop scale. See, it's right about 100 and, I wanna say 105 pounds, somewhere right in there. Still, not very heavy, but pretty awkward. And, you know, trying to do everything myself all the time. And I thought about waiting and getting some help, but I can't wait for nothing, so I just figured out a way uh, to get this thing set up there. I used some pipe stands, got some clamps, clamped everything into position, be sure everything is nice and square from plumb and level, and flat to the top and uh, trying to get this thing welded in. Operating off of the HGP Inbrock 200 TLP. This is a stick welding machine. It's just perfect for this, you know, a little lunchbox size. And I was able to just uh, set it right on the bed of the truck right here. And, uh, and it's gonna work out really good. I'm using some MG80 uh, electrodes right here. These are all purpose uh, electrodes, all position. Um, they work pretty nice, I, you know, that's kind of like a cheater electrode, if you will. And I like running them. You know, they are eighth inch thick electrodes, but I like running them right around 90, 95 uh, amps. They seem to work the best right in there, depending on uh, the metal thickness. But uh, I've been using these a lot lately. Got them at uh, usaweld.com. And this is right at 90 amps right here. This was the very first weld, just a little bit on the cool side. So I bumped it up to 95 amps for the, the remainder of this project. And it was much smoother, uh, much better to operate. You can see that slag just peels right off. All right, just tacking in the top right here to be sure everything is where it needs to be. You might be able to see this giant clamp right here. You know, one of my listeners had, uh, had gave me four of these and uh, said that his dad uh, had these things didn't have any use for them and thought maybe I might have some use for them when I got them they were they were pretty heavily <clears throat> corroded and rusted I was able to uh, refurbish them a little bit got them cleaned up and uh, I knew I'd use them Sunday for something and here's a good example you just never know when you're gonna need a deep a deep sea clamp for, uh, for something this worked perfect for that All right, I'm just going along here, just uh, finishing it up. You know, about every six to eight inches, about every uh, about two inches long. I figured that's all you really need. That's more than enough. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. You know, these kind of projects like this are a lot of fun for me. A uh, spur of the moment. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of gates mostly and a lot of uh, stuff like that. And when I get something like this, it's just a little change up and uh, you know, leaving it up to me to try to figure out how this is going to work. Uh, you know, this this worked out really good. Uh, maybe not the best way to do it, but uh, in this situation right here, it definitely served the purpose. Just cleaning up the welds a little bit with an angle grinder, just rounding things up to be sure there's no sharp edges anywhere. All right, after a little prime, a coat of primer on there, and I just taped everything off and uh, just uh, shot some white paint on there and uh, cleaned that thing up uh, really nice. Yeah, it worked out uh, just as good as I hoped it would. No issues there. Um, you can see that uh, it's just back about four or five more inches. The gates drop right in. No problems right there. And there it is. Nice job. That was a fun job, quick and easy. Really enjoy these type of projects. You can see that extension right there, right off the very back, about four more inches. That worked out really good. Of course, there's no way to finish it up, except for the Jimbo's Garage sticker on the back. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.
see you next time on Jimbo's Garage.